Okay, now that you've learned to make friends with your nerves in part one and put them to work for you in part two, now we're going to talk about how to outsmart your nerves and beat them at their own game. If you're new here, hello, I'm Adria Tenner. I'm an actor, writer, filmmaker, and coach. And I help actors, executives, and entrepreneurs just like you achieve dream careers by up-leveling your confidence, finding your authentic voice, and forging genuine connections with your chosen audience. And this is part three of my series on how to crush your nerves. Okay, are you sitting down? Are you ready? I'm about to spill the tea on how to outsmart your nerves. Are you ready? Incoming, unpopular opinion. You rehearse. Yeah, that's right, that's it. You practice and you practice and you practice and you rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse 250 times, minimum. Now, this may seem simple, almost too simple to be effective, but practice truly does make perfect. Running through your presentation or audition 10, 20, or even 50 times may help you feel comfortable with the material. However, if you want to ensure success under any circumstance, whether it's a cell phone ringing, a baby crying, faulty AV equipment, or your ex showing up unexpectedly in the front row, then you need to run through it 250 times minimum. Once more for the people in the back, 250 times minimum, period, end of sentence, mic drop. Hopefully my editor put a mic drop there. This practice, see what I did there, was another game changer for me in handling my nerves. Now, I am not saying that you need to memorize your presentation or audition word for word. Although if you're doing an audition, unless there's a typo, you need to say the words word for word, but that's a subject for another video. But when it comes to preparing yourself for a presentation, although I don't recommend memorizing your speech word for word, you do need to memorize the bullet points you're making. And more importantly, you need to memorize and connect to why you're making them. Why are they important? And how do they connect? And when they do connect, what is the whole of the piece? What is the event of what you're getting at? How does it all add up? What does it amount to? Where are you going with this presentation? And where do you want your audience to arrive with you when you're finished? How do you want them to feel? What do you want them to do? And the easiest way to do this is to connect to why you're saying what you're saying. Why is it important? Trust me, if you know the answers to these questions, it's gonna be so much easier to remember your lines. Also, when you do connect to the reason you're sharing what you're sharing, it takes the focus off yourself and puts it onto the material you are sharing and your audience. But we're, we're gonna to get to that in a minute. So what I'm saying is knowing the structure of your presentation or audition, like the back of your hand, creating a space for your communication that you are sharing to live rent free in your head, at least until you're done with this particular piece, is key to your success. You want the material to be embedded in your subconscious, in your body, to become muscle memory. Like when you drive home from work and you arrive without remembering the journey you've just made because you've done it so many times, your unconscious mind just knows the way. Like you're driving on autopilot. That's what we're aiming for. You wanna run the presentation or audition over and over and over. Run it more than you think you need to so that when your nerves creep up or something throws you off, your subconscious mind will just take over and keep you from falling off your bike or crashing or falling flat on your face or freezing up on stage or in that conference room. I'm telling you, this is key. You're welcome. Knowing your material this well will also allow you to actually look at your audience in the eye and speak to them and allow your speech to actually become a dialogue. Even though they're not actually saying anything, they are still part of the communication loop. When you are present with your audience and you are in touch with why you're saying everything, your presentation will come to life and be moving and interesting. And get this, <laughs> fun! Okay, so I always like to implement these new ideas and teachings with an exercise that I talk you through. 
This one is going to be a little bit different because the rehearsal and practice part is up to you. You'll have to do that on your own and it may seem easier than it actually is. Of course, it means that you're going to run through your presentation or audition material 250 times, but there's more to it than that. I really recommend putting on the clothes, especially the shoes that you're planning to wear. And maybe you're going, but Adria, I don't know what shoes or clothes I'm going to wear. And to that, I say, decide, figure it out so that you do know. And then I want you to rehearse every single step. I'm not saying that you have to set your presentation and all your movements in stone, not at all. In fact, just the opposite. I am saying that the more comfortable you are with the contents of your presentation or audition, the more freedom you will have while you're doing it to enjoy it and maybe change it up and go off script. Not if you're doing an audition and actually allow yourself to connect with your audience. Your mind will be freed up to pay attention to the people that you're speaking to and for, instead of trying to remember what the F you were trying to say. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna talk you through a meditative rehearsal process for presenting. This is gonna be geared towards talking you through rehearsal for a specific presentation or audition that you have coming up. But if you don't have a specific presentation or audition on the horizon, here's what I want you to do instead so that you can begin immediately to implement this new rehearsal process. And I have to say, I'm actually really excited about my alternate idea and I kind of want to try it myself. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. Think of someone you admire and respect. If you're an actor, maybe it's Daniel Day-Lewis, Meryl Streep, or Kerry Washington. If you're an entrepreneur, maybe it's Sheryl Sandberg, Gary Vee, or Simon Sinek. He's my celebrity crush, by the way. If anyone knows him, please give him my love. Or maybe you love Tony Robbins or Brene Brown or Obama. Figure out who you admire, then pause this video. Just make sure you come back and Google a transcript or speech from that person and copy it for yourself. Then you're gonna take that speech and start to practice it like it's your own. In fact, <laughs> please do make it your own. And these are just ideas. I'm just riffing here. It can be any piece of material, a poem, a short essay, a monologue from your favorite TV show or movie. Another source I love is Brianna Weiss' book, 101 Essays That Will Change the Way You Think. I will link to that and some of the other ideas in the show notes below. But this sourcing of material is a double win because not only will you be practicing rehearsing, but you'll also be embodying an inspirational speaker whom you admire and their words are going to permeate your being and definitely have some good effects. Like I said, I kind of want to do this myself. Okay. Now on to the exercise. Okay. Now with your script in your hand, your presentation or audition outfit on your body, including the shoes. I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're sitting at your desk or in the conference room or in the audition waiting room and hear your boss or colleague or casting director call your name and introduce you to the group. Then stand and walk to where you will give your talk or audition Go ahead and visualize all of that in your mind. If you can actually do that in the place where the presentation is going to happen, even better. Once you get up, take a moment to sip a little bit of water. Feel your feet on the floor in the shoes you've picked out to wear. Feel the air in the room on your face. These are both things that will make you present. Look out into the audience and see the faces of the people. Practice smiling at everyone watching you. Then take another second to center yourself. Feel the excited energy bubbling up and then go ahead and make that little shift in your mind for yourself that it's not nervousness, it's excitement. 
and that you're going to use that excitement to fuel you and give you the juice you need, the juice you want to kill this presentation or audition. Then smile and run through your presentation 250 times. Now the first 50 times are probably going to suck. You don't know this piece yet and that's okay. You're going to learn it. I hate this part myself. I feel like a fraud. I feel like a terrible actor, a terrible person, but I know because I've done this so many times that I will get better. Practice really does make perfect. And you have to do the first 50 to 100 to get to the second 100 and then you're home free. I promise. I'm gonna leave you to it and let you go ahead and crush your nerves by practicing now. But let me know how it goes. Thank you so much for watching. If this has been helpful, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're interested in having this material in the form of a free ebook, go ahead and click the link below. And if you're feeling ready to tackle your nerves and boost your performance, I would love to help you whether you're an actor, an executive, or an entrepreneur. Let's talk about how my one-on-one -on -one sessions or group classes can help you. You can schedule a free strategy session with me by clicking the link below. And I'll see you over in part four.